Now then, guys, Quinn's Dude here, back again with the Rad Music Chat channel, uh, album number two from the 1001 Albums You Must Hear Before You Die book. And album number two is Elvis Presley's debut album from 1956. Released on March 13th, 1956, Elvis's debut is actually um, a collection of um, songs from three separate recording sessions. Two of these sessions were from RCA Studios, one from uh, New York and one from Nashville. And uh, another session was actually from um, Sun Studios in Memphis. So before this album had, uh, was released on RCA, Elvis was actually uh, under contract with the infamous Sun Records, um, which was ran and owned by Sam Phillips. Now Elvis had had two uh, successful singles released um, that charted at number five and number one on the country and western chart. So following the success of these uh, these singles, um, Elvis was picked up by the the now very well known Colonel Tom Parker, who was his uh, acted as his manager. Now Parker had a pre existing um, relationship with Steve Scholes at uh, RCA Records. So Scholes bought Presley out of his contract at Sun. Um, records for $40,000 which was an absolutely huge amount back then. That amount of $40,000 is not only huge because of the amount of money that that was back then but also because rock and roll itself was still um, seen as, as, as underground and, and you know very dangerous music. What helped convince Scholes and uh, RCA was the fact that Elvis's standalone single Heartbreak Hotel had actually gone to number one on the, the mainstream national billboard charts. So despite Heartbreak Hotel not actually being on the album's track listing, uh, the album came out and uh, smashed all expectations. By the end of 1956, um, this album had sold over a million copies. It was RCA's first pop album to do so and had earned the label over a million dollars. So to the, uh, the actual album itself, um, I'll be honest with you, old time rock and roll is not really a style that is um, something I get overly excited about but it's a fun listen um it's also worthwhile keeping in mind how uh groundbreaking this album was at the time you know this was a white boy uh, playing essentially black people's music that was seen as you know, dangerous um and uh you know was going to corrupt the youth of america so what kicks off the album is uh the two minute romp of carl perkins's um blue suede shoes which is hard not to enjoy it's just a really fun song uh, another highlight for me is actually seems to be um, a highlight for most people who uh, engage with this album it's track three i got a woman which is actually um, a ray charles classic that elvis had been um, had had in his set for about a year to that point um, but the ray charles version is superior but the track One Sided Love Affair is actually really enjoyable. Um, the way that Elvis actually sings it is uh, really, really amusing and actually showcases already so early how um, versatile he was with his with his voice and how he could sort of shift styles. Um, the lyrics to this song as well are, are you know, worth a worth a giggle. Um, and what kicks off traditionally what would have been side two on the album is uh, Tutti Frutti, which is obviously everyone knows that song. And Elvis's rendition is enjoyable, but it's just hard once you've heard the little Richard version of it. It, it, it I, you know, it's it's really brave to take on that song because little Richard's version of it is doesn't matter if you like rock and roll. Yeah, little Richard's version of, um, of Tutti Frutti is absolutely raucous um, and um, just just really untouchable so if you haven't heard his version of it or even seen any of the live renditions um, check it out because it's, it's it's a really good watch so some of you may be thinking that the artwork looks kind of familiar and you're not sure where well the clash paid homage to this album um, with their uh, with their album london calling so from what i gather from uh, 
Elvis aficionados, this is not a lot of people's favorite Elvis album, but it's um, you know, it's definitely uh, it's an affectionately held album. It's you know, it's it's his debut, so it's where it all began. Um, special shout out to the guitar player, the lead guitar player on this album, Scotty Moore. Um, Scotty Moore was Elvis's guitar player from 1954 to 1968, um, and uh, was responsible for uh, you know influencing some huge guitar players out there keith richard said he wouldn't have picked up the guitar if it wasn't for scotty moore and his lead guitar playing on this album is definitely something that kept me um engaged while while listening to it so let me know what you think of this album if you do give it a listen or two um and anything maybe you're already a fan of it is there something i haven't uh, highlighted that you think should be or any songs that i didn't mention please let me know in the comments just quickly as well before we end um as this channel as i'm trying to be very organic with it and taking suggestions i've had another suggestion which is to not work through the book in order so i haven't quite want, uh, worked out how i'm gonna maybe pick um the way to do it i don't know whether i'm just going to flick through the book and stop at a page or i'm going to jump through the decades or uh what i'm going to do but we're not going to run through it just in order because i think obviously it might keep some of you more interested and engaged if it's a lot more random so anyway thank you for watching please do like and subscribe please share the channel with anyone that you think might be interested and uh yeah as always stay rad mm -hmm.